30th of November 2023. In this episode of the Loose Cannon, I want to talk about that mantra that blacks like to use so frequently and freely. They claim to have superior logic. Now that is a EFF thing. They like to use that. And then there is a brigade of keyboard warriors that like to claim natural intelligence. Now the natural intelligence they use to contra any arguments where lack of education is part of the topic. But the ridiculousness of it is that it actually doesn't make sense to dwell on it and spend time on it, but we have to take into consideration that to a large number of black militants, those two slogans are the foundation of basically their existence. Now, I want to talk about Eskim and this superior logic in natural intelligence that we have. But before I start, look at this meme. We live in a time where intelligent people are being silenced so that stupid people won't be offended. That is so relevant and so true, but it has a lot of complications and implications. And then we get this from our Minister of Electricity, I call him the Minister of Darkness, and he claims this week's heat wave in five provinces, including Gauteng, has been named as one of the reasons South Africa was suddenly plunged into stage six load shedding for the weekend. Now, the leader of AFSA, Mr. Letuli, has responded on the, to this and He's a qualified guy, he's an engineer, and he said that this was a ridiculous statement to make. And then there was that statement that the same Ramachopa made about the fact that they are not going to allow more renewables to get onto the grid because the grid cannot cope with it. There's too much fluctuations and too much spikes and things like that. And then as a counter, they also claim that it will be necessary to build battery accumulator plants, installations, to take the renewable power and then give it to the grid more organized. Now, just think about that. First of all, you're sitting with a generation method that is totally unreliable and inconsistent and very expensive. Secondly, they now have to pair it up with a more of a battery pack to first absorb that fluctuating charges and then release it to the grid in a more controlled manner. But never forget into a grid that does not exist. So the grid must also be built. So it is this hell of an expensive renewable installation. Then it needs a support of a more expensive battery pack and it still requires a lot of money to expand the grid to take that, so that renewable power. And, once again, the Mr. Latuli from AFSA did a long, solid presentation about the ridiculousness of expanding the grid to accommodate the renewables. And I did a skid mark on it a while back. The fact of the matter is, this whole renewable thing is, it doesn't make sense. You can discuss it in any which way you want. It doesn't make sense. The calculations does not balance. But we have to 
subject ourselves to that superior logic and natural intelligence. Anything else, especially facts, facts doesn't count. It does not count. And then we get this. The UK government invests 125 million rand in South African wind farms. More wind farms are said to be added to the country's electricity grid to help ta tackle South Africa's electricity problem. Now, I'm going to make a statement that you can go and Google it. Nowhere in the world has a wind farm ever been profitable. Nowhere. You're sitting with a situation that it is extremely expensive to, in to erect and install those windmills. Then you have the problem that those things have got a limited life. And they claim that this is an environmentally friendly option. But in Scotland, they mow down 40 million trees to make room for windmills. Now, all of this is about carbon, CO2. Imagine how much CO2 40 million trees takes out of the environment. But no, they chop those trees down and replace it with these things. And then, these things need to be connected to the grid and they need electricity to maintain them. So, where's the common sense there? But the natural intelligence ignores that fact. In Australia, what happened in Australia is the government charge the citizens a tax and that tax is then given to the wind farm operators to offset their installation costs and the wind farms include their costs and expenses in the power that they send back into the grid. So that is why these wind farms can never be profitable. Then there has now been studies done in Scandinavian waters where they put the offshore wind farms. And the scientists found that those wind farms vibrate at a fre certain frequency, frequency into the water. And that disturbance into the water is killing off the sea life in the vicinity of the wind farms. But the more serious issue is the dolphins and whales, they communicate with one another. Some, there are claims that, they can, that, the, that the big whales can communicate basically around the globe. But these wind farms these windmills, interferes with that communications of the dolphins and the whales. But, once again, the environmentalists don't pay attention to that, just as they are ignoring the fact that to make the batteries requires extremely toxic mining, toxic to the environment, Plus, there's not enough. That is what, where we are with these renewables. And then this superior logic, natural intelligent crew that is in charge of South Africa, under the guidance of Cyril Ramaphosa, a man that promotes the decolonization of education. And they go and they take massive loans from the EU and from the IMF and from the World Bank for, and from various other governments in Europe, in the Western world, for their so-called just transition of the energy sector. 
So they shut our cold plants down because the cold plants provide to, uh, puts too much CO2 into the atmosphere. And you must just remember that the atmosphere, the total atmosphere, the CO2 percentage is 0.04%. 0.04%. But they hammer on that. And the reality is if it should go up to 0.06%, the vegetation on the earth will most probably double. And I've spoken to a guy the other day that was here, a technician, and I said to him, have you noticed that all the trees planted next to the roads and next to the streets and so forth, they push their branches over the roads? And he said, yes, you've seen that. And I said, you know, why is that? And he said, no, he doesn't talk about it. And I said, because those trees want the common that the vehicles emit when they pass. Now that is a simple thing. You only need to go out and check for yourself. You can see it. You don't need fucking natural intelligence or superior logic. You need normal intelligence and normal logic to see that. But it doesn't, these things, these arguments make no sense because there's a heap of cars that are creaming it. We are suffering from all the load shedding. And on the Black Friday weekend specifically, you know what happened. And this is a meme that is so relevant. Eskom, Black Friday special, 100% off. Okay. Now, I'm not going to rant about that because this is facts and reality. But what we have to take into consideration is that the Western world is pushing this super intelligent black crew that is in charge of South Africa to kill our coal-fired power stations and export all the coal to Europe because the Germans are firing up their coal plants that's been mothballed. They are now firing it up. Why are they doing it? Because they know coal fire electricity is the cheapest form for them. But they are in a highly developed economy and they want cheap coal fire electricity. But these superior logic, natural intelligent Blacks in charge of South Africa are too stupid, yes, stupid, to f see that they are crippling the South African economy in favor of exporting our coal to Germany so that Germany can progress. And then they sell a lot of bullshit to us, the consumers. And the sad part is, Political organizations like the EFF, which is supposed to be opposition to the ANC, they are totally consumed with ideology and pushing racism, pushing expropriation without compensation, killing hundreds of businesses, killing thousands of jobs. Instead of rocking up and concentrate on the stupid decisions made by the ANC. But they cannot do it because they are just as fucking stupid. That is the thing. That is the problem. So, we as the consumers, where are we? We are sitting in a situation that we have to live with this dilapidated power supply and we see how businesses close every day. This day, this morning, we had a load shedding session from 7 to 9 and we've got another one from 1 to 3. Now just think for a moment, all those small businesses that provides breakfast and things like that for the people going to work, they cannot operate because they don't have electricity. And those same businesses, they provide lunch, but they are load shedding over lunch hour, so they can operate 
cannot operate once again. So they've lost the whole day. But does the superior logic and natural intelligent portion of the population understand what that means? No, they don't. They don't understand that when that business owner closed that shop, there are two, three, four, five jobs going. Plus there's a lot of tax missing for the government. They don't understand that. But now I want to give you this to chew on. They're pushing fucking art for electric vehicles. All over the world they're doing it. But look at the facts around electric vehicles. These charging stations that Tesla puts up and so forth. Usually in busy areas there are six of those charging points in a cluster. Listen to this. That charging station gives 350 kilowatt per station. A home, my home, consumes average 540 watt per hour. 540 watt against 350 kilowatt. That is 0.54 kilowatt. So that 350 kilowatt charge point for one car can actually power 648 homes like mine. Think about it. 648 homes can be powered for the same power used to charge one car. Now there are six of those stations in a cluster. That means 3 1,888 homes like mine can be powered for the same power that they charge six cars. Where is the fucking logic? Where is it? Not superior logic. Standard, clean, solid logic. Intelligent people tells you this is bullshit. It is not sustainable. Eskom cannot provide enough power to power our homes. How the fuck are they going to power all the electric cars? Tell me that. I'm fucking curious to write in the comments here how you're going to do it. And there's this cretin on Twitter that has blocked me, Nick Hedley, because I nail him with questions like this and the fucker cannot answer. So he takes the easy way out and blocks me. And that is what most of these proponents of the renewables are doing. You must not come with facts. Because their superior logic and natural intelligence cancels all facts. But now we have the problem. We are in dire straits with electricity. Volkswagen, Ford and uh, Nissan. And still Ramaphosa, sort the electricity out or we fuck off. I pointed that out to my Mr. X and his answer was absolutely mind-blowing. I'm not going to repeat it. Then we have to understand that these coders are putting South Africa into debt for numbers that me and you can't actually really comprehend because it is huge numbers. I showed one of the proposals to Mr. X and I said, you must go and tell your daughter and his daughter is I think five or six. I said, tell your daughter this. Explain to her that her grandchildren will still pay off on this debt. And once again, I'm not going to repeat the answer. The fact of the matter is, they always throw me, us, the whites, with this cut of white privilege. But I said to him, what the fuck are you talking about? Your black privilege 
wiped my white privilege off the table in 1994. At the same time, you wiped Eskom off the table, you wiped Transnet off the table, you wiped the harbors off the table. And his response to that was, <laughs> to say the least, hilarious. But in any case, he has told me I got to go back to school because I missed grade two. I fucked up in grade two. I should go for that adult education thing or something. Ah, well, I'll, go, I'll have to consider it because seeing that I'm so fucking dumb. But these things is the stuff that they don't appreciate the total complications of what they're doing. They don't understand that. And we have to try and find a way through this chaos to survive. But what is going on at Eskom is a huge, big plan to finally destroy South Africa. The unitary state is going to implode. There is so much destruction in all the civil service departments that it cannot be rectified and turned around in 30 years. So the logical option is crash the republic and balkanize it. And I'm convinced that's the way we're going to go. The fact of it is that it's going to be a traumatic experience. So, in conclusion, this whole green plan is a fucking farce. Don't forget it. Remember, nowhere in the world has there been a single wind farm that operated profitably. I see, I think it is Sweden or Nor Norway. It's Norway that has now shelved all their development of wind farms. They've stopped it. And here is another interesting tidbit. Yesterday I saw an article that Canada, Canada, has now declared nuclear power as green power. Let that sink in. And in one of my skid marks, I said, why don't we go to the Russians and get some of those nuclear engines that they put into torpedoes and into missiles? Take those little nuclear engines and attach generators to it and decentralize the power generation. Put, at, put one or two of them at the Eskom incoming distribution station near a town and that little nuclear generator provides electricity to the town. And if it's got excess, it pumps it back into the grid. And then a friend of mine sent me a message and he said to me, Colleen, we are trying to do that. We are working on these small nuclear generators. Yeah, I think they call them SM SMRs or something like that. But, we, but let's stick to a generator. The reality is those things can fit on the back of a bucky. And he said to me, we cannot do it because South Africa has got laws that prohibits the decentralization of electric, electric, electricity generation. Think about that. There's a law that says Wood Bank cannot buy a SMR. They must take their power from Eskom that cannot provide power. In, in, in Pretoria, there's two power stations sitting idle for I don't know how many years and at millions of rands per year cost of maintenance. They're sitting idle because the municipality is not allowed to generate their own power. In the old days, yes, the old days, the apartheid days, in the old days, many towns, many cities had their own power generations. I remember that little town that I grew up in Natal, we had a hydro power station in the Pongola River that provided power to the town. All of that has been stopped and cancelled and many of those installations have been pillaged into fuck all. You must ask yourself why. 
And I'm going to stop this now and leave you with this. And this is my opinion. The Eskom thing, the collapse of Eskom, is driven by Cyril Ramaphosa. Because Cyril Ramaphosa's instruction from Triple X is to get Eskom into the hands of the oligarchs. Triple X. Why do they want that? Because then they can control the whole region with a switch. That's why they're so desperate to get that. And he is doing his best to get there. Yesterday there was an article that published that the World Bank now owns the national grid and they have given their approval for splitting the grid out of the Eskom bundle. And in one of my skid marks that I did on this, I said the most valuable asset that Eskom has is the grid, not any of the power stations, the grid. Because the grid owner can immediately implement decentralized power generation. That's a plan. And once Eskom is out of state control and in the hands of the oligarchs, South Africa is going to go the way that Russia went when the USSR collapsed and the whole country fell into the hands of the oligarchs. That's the way South Africa is going to go. And on top of that, they're going to balkanize it because, because it's easier for a smaller region. Let's say, for just for example, uh, Kozulu. It's easier for Kozulu to reinvigorate the government systems that they need to run their region because they're only providing for a fraction of the population. Same with the Northwest, the same with the Northern Cape, everywhere. It's easier for each of those regions to fix, say for instance, uh, the health system or the police in that smaller unit can be easier fixed than to fix it for the whole country. Main reason for that is because as far as the whole country is concerned, the skills and the experience is gone. It's not available to the government. It is just not simply not available. But many of those skills that are located in the different regions will very quickly jump in to save the region. Think about that. Please give me a like and subscribe and share the thing. Thank you for your support.